now it's time for your tech news with Toby Shapshak, the editor and publisher of Stuff Magazine. A very good morning to you, Toby. Now, the U.S. Treasury and another agency were hacked seemingly by Russia. It's just starting to look like there is no one that is safe. Indeed, and in fact, news that's come up overnight is that, in fact, it's a whole bunch of U.S. agencies that have been hacked. But part of the security protocol is not to say whether they've been hacked or not. And it's, it's unbelievably sophisticated. The, 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 the fears are that all of America's Cold War and other secrets, coronavirus, vaccine secrets, a whole bunch of stuff may have been stolen. And this leak or this hack has apparently been on the go since March. There's a company called Solar Winds based in Texas. Uh, its software is used by a whole bunch of, of American firms and other firms to, to manage their servers and their infrastructure. And it looks like a, an update of this software in March was used to infiltrate. A very sophisticated um, operation believed to have been undertaken by Russian uh, hackers. Uh, a, a, a unit particularly known by their nickname Cozy Bear. Turns out Cozy Bear is the biggest hacker of uh, the year right now. <laughs> and they, um, <clears throat> they got in and they've apparently encrypted the data they've stolen. So they've been very sophisticated. They've, people uh, investigating it don't actually know what has been stolen. But it's, it is huge. And it just shows you, as you mentioned, that nobody's safe working from home. We thought we were the most vulnerable, not the big businesses or the, the government organizations. But this is a highly, highly sophisticated hack. These hackers knew what they were doing. They were very slow. They were very careful. They didn't do anything to uh, reveal themselves. And in fact, it's, it, it is really huge. Um, I, I can't begin to stress what uh, America's security crats must be feeling. They've, they've had that potentially all of their secrets stolen by their Cold War arch enemies. So potentially a massive, massive realignment of things next year. But we won't know because that's the nature of this kind of very clandestine uh, hacking and, and how it operates. And of course, the geopolitics that informs um, global politics will be very interesting. But nonetheless, uh, at least I don't sound like such a crazy person when I keep saying to people, be paranoid about your security. Um, be more paranoid. Uh, my solution, but ironically, is a Russian company called Kaspersky, uh, now based in Switzerland. Um, and they are my security software. So any of, any of the big packages work. You can't just use antivirus. You have to use a whole bunch of things. I mean, in that regard, I must say one of the things that, in personal terms, that, that should worry people is if you get an SMS to update your, uh, to log into Facebook or to log into banking or to verify a credit card transaction. Those the credit, those SIM cards can be cloned and re uh, replicated. It's often what happens with bank fraud. You have to have two people on the inside, one in the bank, one in the cellular operator, so that you can get the SMS. I urge all people to use an authenticator app. Google makes one, Microsoft makes one, LastPass makes one. Much better. I noticed at F and B that I bank with them. Uh, instead of getting an SMS, you now have to go into the F and B amp, uh, app and authenticate the uh, the transaction. Now that's a secure way to do things. So yeah. um, I don't want to sound alarmist, but I'm going to write uh, lots of things about how people should stay secure, which I'll obviously uh, send to ENCA to tweet. It's we should be worried and we should be better. And in fact, the way to think about cyber security for South Africans is you buy a house, but you don't put on any, uh, you don't build a wall, you don't put on uh, electric fences or razor wire, you don't lock the front door. Those are the kinds of things South Africans need to do. All but right. uh, enough about that. It's been it's been a, a very interesting time in the in the world in yeah. general. Yeah, totally. Facebook. Right. Facebook has been. Toby, it's really unsettling, you know, the, the stories that you're telling, but I need to move on very quickly, and we'd like you to keep this brief, but rumor has it you're going to boil your turkey this Christmas. Now, you have to tell me what that's all about. Ah, oh, it's great. So the biggest cooking trend in the world right now is something called sous vide, which is French for under vacuum. Turns out if you call a cooking method boil in a bag, nobody <laughs> will take you seriously for the whole of the 80s. But if you just rename it in French, sous vide, 
it's fantastic and it is it's it's a brilliant way to do slow cooking with very precise temperature control you put uh, whatever you're cooking into a ziploc you seal it vacuum seal it and then you put it in a bath of water at a very low temperature you can see that big it's called an immersion circulator a thermal immersion circulator it sounds like a, a <laughs> something out of star wars and you and you can cook anything so this is only the third turkey i'm ever cooking uh, I've I've survived on Nigella Lawson's recipes before, and I'm going to do sous vide. And in fact, to cook it properly, you you a whole turkey at one time. You have to yeah. spatchcock it, so two new things. But and the company I've chosen is is sous chef. I investigated a whole bunch of of these thermal immersion circulators, and there's a great company in Cape Town called Sous Chef. Mm. The founder saw this whole trend, experimented, played with it couldn't find a local product or local support so he made his own good for him and uh, and their prices are very reasonable they're still running a black friday special um join my new cult as i <laughs> sous vide the turkey all right toby you're going to try it out and let me know how it goes that is toby shapshak our tech expert while still to